Lamb. Lamb, lamb is a thing. Yeah, I think that covers it. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. <coughs> okay, <coughs> let's try that again. Lamb, or dihrith, I'm probably butchering that, literally the animal, is the strangest thing I've seen since the lighthouse. I see, mate. You're fond of me lobster. It's one of those movies where you just have to accept what you're looking at and press on, or there's no way you'll get through it. Now, I actually found it quite watchable. The performances are all solid. The camera work was good. I especially liked how often it doesn't move, making the world a still place where people move on it. This also ties into one of the interpretations of the plot, but let's come back to that later. Normally, a reviewer breaks things down into what they did like and what they didn't like. With this film, I'd say my two categories are what I liked and what was weird, because, well, I did like it. I'm used to dense, patient storytelling, like a certain book I'm reading right now, and it's not as common in film. The opening section where we observe Ingvar and Maria's life together strongly established that while they're good people, there's something unspoken dulling their lives, making it a routine. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's the death of their daughter, Ada. But the way it's handled is very real. The problem isn't something that boils over dramatically, but annoying cloud that never goes away until the startling birth that gets the story going. And the rest of the movie continues in the same way, and I loved it. It's amazing how well we get to know the characters by just watching and seeing that Maria is the sort of person who abuses books. <coughs> <clears throat> Of course, the dialogue does pick up once Pieter arrives, but even then it's often what's unspoken that has the most impact. Such as the scene when Pieter doesn't shoot Ada. We don't need dialogue, we are being shown the story. Speaking of things unsaid, my personal theory is that Maria and Pieter hooked up in the past. He seems very comfortable with trying to touch her, and her refusals are somehow guilty. Anyway, that's my take. So, now the weird stuff. This hyper-realistic movie has a ram-human hybrid child and her father, the Ram Man. Who he is or where he comes from is never explained. I already looked for him in folklore but didn't find anything apart from his far more common cousin, the Minotaur. The most obvious meaning of the movie is nature taking back the Earth, as symbolized by the Ram Man taking Ada back at the end. Unlike the sheep and lambs kept on the farm, he's not some helpless herbivore, and can even use a gun. Sheesh. By the way, uh, extra points for not having a jump scare, but still managing to be startling. Now, on the bright side, the intelligence of the Ram Man means Ada understood much of what happened, at least that she was loved, and clearly mourns for Ingvar at the end. She can tell she's not like them, and probably understands how special they must be. Quite frankly, that's all very adorable, and I loved it. Ingvar! Take your pup. the deer. Screw you, man. Also, the amount of shots where the camera doesn't move could symbolize how the Earth is a constant and humans are transitory, but pinch of salt. And let's not stop at the nature-taking-revenge metaphor. Here's some more weirdness to consider. The Ram Man clearly entered the barn without permission. It's not like Maria and Ingvar stole Ada from him. He had his bit of pleasure and ran off, so he's not blameless for things getting a tad muddled. Then again, maybe all his actions are those of nature taking retribution for the general lifestyle of the family. On another note, who does Ada belong to? The moment she's born, instead of getting marked and clipped, she's taken into the house, away from her mother, who is later shot for being concerned. This might be a commentary on how the more anthropomorphized something is, the more likely we are to accept it, whereas Ada's mother... Jeez. On one hand, it's nice how Ingvar and Maria look after Ada unquestioningly, but we can also turn it around and see grieving people who selfishly stole another couple's baby to fill the void of their own loss. Then the Ram Man taking retribution at the end. I mean, maybe the you and Ram Man were star-crossed lovers, who knows? Also, note this parallel. The story features two families, with one overlapping member, Ada. Maria took Ram Man's consort and his child, so he takes her husband and gets the child back, settling the score. So, when we take all this stuff, all the different things, and put it together, then... Tell me what does it mean? I'll tell you. I don't know. 
I'm not even kidding. I read an interview with the director and he said that people are free to interpret it how they want and that he sees something different every time he watches it. And he's the freaking director, so I guess we all just have to make up our own minds. This much I do know. I had a wonderful time with this movie. It was opaque, but not confusing or disgusting. It was minimalist, but because I could follow the events moment to moment, it didn't get pretentious. And since it didn't have much dialogue, it didn't get preachy. It had atmosphere and drama, and even got the scares going without ominous audio cues or jump scares. And it's Valdemir Johansson's first feature-length film. So double kudos. Somehow he managed to make a film as heartwarming as it is terrifying. And since Johansson doesn't seem to think that the message of the film is so important that he has to spell it out for us, maybe the movie is just supposed to be enjoyed minute to minute, and trying to figure out some cosmic, all-pervasive message is missing the point. Anyway, this is all just my opinion. Let me know yours down in the comments, subscribe, share to help me fight YouTube obscurity, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.